Hi, my name is Keith Tenzer. I'm a solution architect at Red Hat. And today I'm gonna to walk you through an Ansible automation platform demonstration using a simple use case of restarting servers in AWS. And we're gonna see how all of different groups across an enterprise interact with that use case and the Ansible automation platform. The underlying goal, of course, with the Ansible automation platform or AAP is to reduce friction in an organization, break down silos and connect the line of business together with DevOps, IT ops, SecOps, network ops, and other groups in order to seamlessly, easily, and scalably automate uh, across the organization. So this is the overall picture of what we're gonna do with our workflow today. We're gonna start from zero. We're gonna build a playbook to restart servers from the perspective of a content creator and walk that through showing all the other groups that interact, how they interact um, with the platform, ending with analytics and how do we improve our automation once we've created it. So starting with the content creator, we're gonna start with the first tooling, which is Visual Studio Code. Here, what we're providing through AAP is um, extensions so that we understand uh, YAML and Ansible syntax and can do things like code linting or syntax checking um, of, our, of our playbooks. Um, and so here I've written a playbook. It's a very simple playbook to uh, restart AWS instances broken down into two tasks. And essentially it expects us to input what the target host name is that we want to uh, re uh, reboot in this case. And so I've got this playbook uh, written and at this point um, I'd like to test it. Um, the biggest problem usually folks have in software development and, and content creation is where, where you test it is always different than what production is. And the solution here uh, that AAP, AAP provides is execution environments. Everything, all playbooks are executed in an execution environment which is a container. And that container image we can download and get access to on our laptop uh, and so that we know when we run this it's going to work uh, the same the same way and we've integrated into uh, vs code here by just pressing Control shift p we've integrated ansible and so i can actually execute this playbook which i'm going to do directly here in vs code which is going to spawn ansible uh, navigator which is a tui tool that allows us to um, better visualize what we're doing um, when, we're, when we're doing content crea creation. It helps immensely with troubleshooting and, and verifying uh, uh, things. And we can see right now um, that it's running, um, it's, re it's running, it's restarting, it's got two tasks. Now, as we can see, it is completed. And if I just hit zero, I can d dive into that um, playbook, I can dive into the tasks and you can see how easy this is, of course, um, this is a simple playbook with just two tasks, but imagine one that has a lot more. Um, it's just very easy and I can actually even dive into the, the task itself. I can hit one here and go into the restart task and see the, uh, see the output. Um, and so we've implemented uh, our, or we've executed our playbook. It's run successfully. Um, and at this point, just to show you uh, the image I'm actually using for this uh, is, is local on my laptop and it's coming from uh, the private automation hub. And so if we just look at that real quick, I just want to show you here, if we go into the private automation hub, which stores execution environments and collections, which we'll see later, um, and allows us to vet this content. So uh, creators and users aren't going to the internet and using things that haven't gone through security. Um, we can see that uh, image uh, uh, right, right here. So the last piece is to really just check this into GitHub, which I've already done. Um, that's what I'm using as my source control repository. You can see it's in Git. Um, and at this point, as a content creator, I'm done. I've tested my, my content, I've checked it in, and I'm ready, um, ready, ready to go. So the next part is to go back to our workflow and, and look at the uh, automation platform controller. So this is where kind of IT ops, network ops um, come into play. And what we're gonna wanna do is, is take that, that playbook um, and build a job template around that and expose it um, from the uh, automation controller. So I'm going to connect to that. And over here, I'm gonna start with going into projects and automation controller project just maps to a GitHub repository. I've already created one. Um, 
but if I've updated it or added a new playbook, I'm going to, to make that playbook visible, I'm going to want to sync uh, that. This is also something that can be done at runtime um, as well. And we have successfully synced our repository. Um, and the next thing to do is to create some credentials. I've already created them to connect to AWS and also machine credentials so that we can SSH to uh, the systems that we're going to be uh, automating uh, using uh, some EC2 credentials. Once I have that, I create a job template, which I have here to restart an AWS instance. And if we look at the job template, um, we'll, we'll run through a couple things. It basically brings this all together. So um, we put together an, an inventory, which the automation controller is, is basically querying uh, AWS for, so we know what instances we have. Um, it maps it to the correct project. And we can also add an execution environment. So this is the same execution environment that we were that the content creator was uh, was using. And then uh, finally, we add a playbook here um, for uh, for for what we actually want this job template to run. Um, so that that those are those settings. And then of course, if you remember, we have a parameter that we want the users to input. So what we do is we create a survey which allows us to parameterize our playbook and, ex and expose it nicely to, the, uh, to an end user. In this case, we're asking them to enter an FQDN, basically the server that we want to, uh, that we want to restart. Um, and so we add that in here. And at that point, basically, we're, uh, we're ready to go. And we can launch our playbook and bring it up here and, um, and select the host that we want uh, to do. I'm going to select this host and say next and launch and off it goes. It's going to now run this job template which executes this playbook that our content creator has, has checked in uh, to the environment. And of course we can go to our, our EC2 uh, management here and refresh this. And we can see our, our server is in fact um, stopping because it's, it's going to basically stop, um, restart, and then, and then come back online. Server has now been rebooted. And as we can see, uh, the playbook has uh, completed. So let's go back now to our workflow. And the next piece is now that we've exposed this in the automation controller, how do we expose it to the line of business? They're obviously not going to want to log into the automation controller and, and execute things in that manner. They're going to want to consume this as a service. So AAP provides its own service catalog that you can use optionally. Um, a lot of customers also use ServiceNow and some other things. Um, this is just an option um, for, for, for using that. So um, I'm going to now connect and to that, and we can look at that piece. So if we go here to the service catalog, you can see under products, basically all of those job templates are exposed here. And the one we want is a restart AWS instance. So someone just logs in, they can restart an instance here, um, select order, um, select again the host name, just like we did, hit confirm. And just like any other service, um, it's going to create an order. Uh, and we can view that uh, and see the status of that um, and how it progresses through its life cycle. If there's additional approvals, we'd also see them here. Um, in this case, it's auto-approved. And approvers can also log in here separately uh, if they need to approve things uh, here. There's nothing to approve, but basically, uh, we can see how that works. And now if we go back to our AAP uh, controller and we select jobs, we'll see that AWS uh, task here uh, is running, um, and it's restarting a, uh, a, the server. Now, if we go back to our workflow, um, we can go through the next step, which is, of course, once something's running on the automation uh, controller, it's going to be executed, as we said before, in an execution environment, the one we chose. And it's going to pull in any dependencies from our private automation hub. This is where SecOps and security um, really gets involved because they're the ones that are responsible for curating or ensuring uh, content is curated according to a, a, a policy. And so uh, at this point, we can go into the private automation hub again uh, and look at the other aspect. We saw that it 
stores uh, execution environments, and it also stores collections. And so collect, what collections are is it basically a collection is a group of modules, and modules are the building blocks for doing things in Ansible. When you do something, you're always using a module. In this case, we're using modules um, for AWS uh, to control, restart uh, those systems. And so basically there's, there's a couple different uh, ways you can uh, provide content. You can publish it yourself, which I've done here. Um, you can grab Red Hat certified uh, modules. So there's uh, over a hundred and growing um, uh, collections that each contain tens or hundreds of modules that Red Hat provides that are certified, supported, patched, updated, all that stuff. So you can just grab them and use them. Um, you know they're vetted. Um, but you can also curate your own content like, like I've done here. And you can also curate community content from Ansible Galaxy. Um, it just provides you a mechanism for ensuring that the content that you're consuming has gone through the appropriate, uh, the appropriate process and the appropriate controls. So if we go back, we can see that um, our playbook has in fact completed successfully and we've completed uh, this step. So if we go back to now our workflow again, we can go on to the next step. Of course, um, the automation has been deployed. Um, you know, this is just saying, we, you know, we, anything can be automated, compute, storage, network, other, um, and we've completed a cycle. However, we're not done, right? This is great. We have something that's automated, line of business can, can, can be consume it or it can be consumed in different ways, but we're missing one piece and that is, how do we improve it from here? Unless we have data and analytics, we're not gonna know how, how it's being consumed, how, how, how it's working in the environment, or what its impact is. And so that's where uh, the analytics piece really comes into play. So at this point, I'm going to drop into that view, which is um, available at console.redhat.com. And uh, so the first thing is there's, there's reports. Uh, as you can see here, uh, what we're doing is aggregating all the playbooks, showing how often they are executed, and showing how much we've saved. So you can manually input here how much how much in dollars, how much an hour is worth, um, you know, in labor, in, in, in process wise, um, and it'll produce these, these calculations for you. Uh, and then there's some canned reports that are really useful. Uh, one I like is the job run rate. Um, this shows you how often somebody is consuming or how often people are consuming your automation. So you'd like to see obviously this number, this going up. This is a good indicator um, for showing adoption. Um, and you can see that uh, across, across our environment here. Um, some, another report I really like is the, uh, modules, uh, most used modules, because this shows, um, of the content that we're providing in, in automation hub and curating what's actually, what are actually people using? Um, and, and this could also give us some indications of making sure that, you know, those things are actually, you know, um, secure and, and vetted properly, uh, et cetera. So this gives us ability to know what's coming into the, the environment. Um, and then there's the automation calculator. Uh, this allows us, as we, as, as we can see, to really break down how much time the automation actually takes. So in this case, I've just said 60 minutes. Um, and um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna figure out, okay, um, based on how long that automation would take manually and based on how often it runs, uh, per, per day, it's going to kind of get an average here. It's going to figure out how much you've saved based on what you've plugged in. So again, this isn't necessarily to, you know, try to figure out hard costs or something like that. These are obviously soft costs, but this gives you a, a, a objective way to track the benefits. And obviously you'd like to see this number grow. So it really shows you how you, you know, what you're getting your return on investment um, here. Then there's uh, organize, organizational statistics, um, which, which kind of show how the jobs are being run across the organization. Uh, there's a jobs explorer, which basically shows the console of uh, the controller that we've already seen, um, but it, it does it across, uh, across all, the, all the environment, all the clusters. And then of course, there's a breakdown from clusters. In this case, I just have one cluster, but um, you know, in an enterprise environment, you'd have more than one cluster potentially. And you could see how the jobs as well as job templates and modules are being um, are being uh, uh, consumed. So with that said, that brings us to our conclusion. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, demonstration, got a lot out of it, and and really could see 
how AAP is, is so much more than just Ansible and Tower um, and that really those, those components are key to broader uh, automation adoption across the enterprise, hence why we're calling it a platform. Thank you.